This is Moonar 3, and Moonar 3 last week, well, it, it had a bit of a bad time. Its plan was to collect materials based science in high and low space, as well as goo science in high and low space about the moon. Unfortunately, it didn't have anywhere near the Delta V it needed in order to get its capture, let alone its return, because it needs to go back to Kerbin, thanks to the fact that we are playing with Kerbalism, and with Kerbalism, uh, samples like the Materials Bay and the Goo have to go back in order for you to collect the science from them. And there has been a task force assigned to do an investigation to say what went wrong, and I will explain what went wrong very, very, very soon. But the important news is, is that the math team were completely cleared of any problems. Our budgets were all fine. This was a problem in the VAB. But why I'm out here with this thing is because, well, I was thinking after the stream last time, this guy is in this, it's done its flyby of the moon, and it's now in this great big giant orbit, and I tried to put, uh, I put a maneuver out here at Apoapsis to try to get my periapsis down into Kerbin's atmosphere so that we can attempt to recover what we did collect, but unfortunately, um, I don't have the Delta V even to do that. However, so I'm going to delete this note, it's not doing me anything. I realize that, of course, this orbit is still intersecting with the moon's orbit. It should be possible for us to get a moon intercept and perhaps still do something with this. And, and to be honest, I thought maybe I could re recover this mission, but then I realized even if I did manage to get a capture about the moon, I have nowhere near the fuel needed to break back out of that orbit again. So I think what I shall do is see if I can get myself a moon encounter and then see what I can do with it. That's about it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to set the moon. I put a maneuver out here. We're going to set the moon as a target. And you can see here our, our close encounter indicators. By the time we're down to here, the moon's going to be here. So that's nowhere close. But we can see when we're going to be close to a moon encounter by simply popping ahead in orbit here. Oh, like if we look at that, look at that. That's that's pretty close here. We can see that uh, these two are coming pretty close. Why don't I try and see if I can finagle that into a moon encounter. So put this here. It looks to me like I'm just going to the opposite side of those. And I'm going to do a little bit of prograde here. Oh, 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 it was there. It was there. Okay, not doing it that way. Doesn't take much. A tiny little burn here, and we're starting to get a moon encounter. Now, let's not get too excited. This moon encounter is in 30 and a half days. <laughs> so don't expect uh, don't expect this to be dealing, you know, anything soon. So let's take a look at this encounter a little bit more closely. And just remind people what the plan was. The plan was to capture in this orbit, then to go down into low space and get some materials bay and goo in low space, then to break out and go back to Kerbin. Um, I might be able to finagle enough to get a capture, but then, so what? It's going to sit there use and be useless. Um, so what I think I shall do instead is sort of put this fella out of its misery. So where's that maneuver node? I'll show you what I mean. I'll give it an explosive death so I don't have to look at it anymore. There's my maneuver node. That brings up the little widgety thing down here. And we're just going to kind of see what we can do about aiming this. There. <laughs> That's all I'm going to do. Though this is going to just, we got this maneuver coming up in 20 days, so we're not going to be seeing this uh, crash anytime soon. Um, I don't want to wait 20 days to do this, so what we're going to do right off the bat is get back in the VAB, we'll talk about what went wrong, and then I'm going to rebuild this thing and try it again and hopefully do it right. But what I will do here is open up alarm clock. We'll add a notification for this maneuver. We'll give ourselves maybe 10 minutes warning ahead of time. So we got this maneuver coming up in 20 and a half days. Uh, this maneuver I deleted. I do have in four and a half hours Moonar 1. Moonar 1, I can show it to you. It is, boop. Is that it? There's Moonar 1 in this orbit. It, I have a contract to adjust its orbit. We're going to, and that's the maneuver to help facilitate that. So we'll get to that today. But right now, why don't we get to the Space Center. 
I could whip around the moon, James is saying, and I did consider that. I could whip around the moon, use the moon to get a gravity assist and go into Kerbin's atmosphere. And I suspect very strongly that that's a very doable thing to do. But then what? Like, I'm not getting to the moon for like, it was over 20 days from now. I don't want to wait 20 days for my materials-based science. I'm an impatient person. I want to do it right now. <laughs> so that's why I'm just... It's just too far into the future and I just flat out don't want to wait that long. And I do have a plan for that science. Actually, why don't I show you the plan for the science? This is why I want the science now. I'll show you this. I do have a plan. If we get into research and development, I want to unlock. I think it's this node landing. Yes. And what I want is this, the double C seismic accelerometer. There's a lot of science associated with that biome specific science on the surface. I want that before I start putting probes on the moon. I want this for next, uh, the next stream. So I want my science now is really what this is. So this is this whole this whole uh, stream today is going to be about collecting science. Here we are. Let's bring up here. I'm going to get rid of my checklist. Let's bring up Moonar three, and I'll explain what went wrong. So here's Moonar three, right? And um, I planned a budget for this thing of 1,410 meters per second, not for the lift off, like once I'm in low Kerbin orbit, 1,410 meters per second should be able to do the whole mission. And if we take a look at the probe bit of this, it says 1,503 meters per second. Sounds like I should have plenty. But when I went and did my investigation, look what happens if I put this on vacuum, Stock is telling me that that stage has 990 meters per second. So these two are giving me two entirely different numbers. One of them is wrong and it's Kerbal Engineer that's wrong. I'm not quite sure what happened and why it's wrong. In fact, I think it's some sort of a staging bit of goofiness. But uh, why don't we see if we can fix that right now by we're going to take off the booster, take off this engine, Keep the lights. I want these lights. We're going to put on a bigger fuel tank. So put this fuel tank on. Put this back on. Okay, so this is now saying 1,512 meters per second. And Kerbal Engineer is saying 2,187. This has something to do with this whole... Actually, I can delete the fairing. I won't be doing this with the fairing on it. It has something to do with this whole... Oh, I know. I bet you I know what I can do. What happens if I change? Nope, that doesn't seem to matter. Or if I change it to this one, that fixed it. <laughs> Just changing what the root part is fixed this. Now these two, I believe. No, now. Oh my gosh, this is confusing. Now, uh. Now, uh, stock doesn't think I have any delta V in that stage. Actually, the fairing should belong here. There it is. 1,512, 1,512. So once I changed the root part to, I think it was this one, um, everything seemed fine. Why that made a difference? I don't know. It's very, very, very confusing, but at least they agree now. Um, I budgeted 1410. Mm, I don't know. Maybe I should see if I can sneak in a little bit more fuel. It's a little bit on the tight side. What if I got this little... That's not very much. I'm wondering if just like an Oscar B might be enough. That'd be 1700. That's... Uh, you know, maybe I'm just getting. What about a couple of these? I know these are... Whoops. These are monopropellant tanks, but I do have the... Uh, fuel tank editor, we can delete this, we can change this to, down here if I scroll down, LFO, put it on maximum and add that on, and that is liquid fuel and oxidizer, all filled up. Doesn't seem to be seeing it though. That's interesting. Oh, it, it is, but it's not much, okay. Let's put on an Oscar B. I'm going to sneak an Oscar B in here. I'm going to sneak an Oscar B. I know what I'll do. 
Uh, I am going to just do a slight modification of all this. We're going to take this girder out. This will save us some mass, too. That's coming out. That's coming out. That's coming out. Uh, we need to change the root part to here. That's coming off. This is coming out. Putting an Oscar B in there. This will be a better. Put the root part back <laughs> to that again. And now let's start sticking stuff on. So I had a goo container here, a goo container here, a fuel cell here, and Let's see here. This was a. Does that sit okay? Oh, that sits nice in that little spot. Um, these are. This one is uh, uh, oxygen for the fuel cell, and this is hydrogen for the fuel cell. I just want to make sure that I didn't mess up any of my numbers there. I need to have at least 5,000 units of hydrogen, and I do. And I need to have at least 2,600 units of oxygen. Oh, well, that's oxidizer. Yes, which I do. There, that even looks a little bit better. And I'm not getting a delta V number. Oh, staging? Yes, the staging's messed up again. Damn you, staging! 1785, that's now plenty of fuel. Okay. Put our blinky lights back on. We're going to do this. Turn that tank to a dark tank. Oh, I don't want an or dark, dark, that tank. Yep. All right. Uh, put the fairing back on. Actually, what I should do is check action groups. I'm sure that got all messed up. Uh, one was, oh, a communitron antenna. No, that's back on there. That's that. Yep. Two should be a mystery goo, a fuel cell, and a science junior. And three should be the same thing. Okay. No, this is working. Okay. Don't forget the lights. Absolutely don't forget the lights. And that's still set right. Okay. Build fairing. Let's get this done. This is really the Munar 3B. <laughs> the first one was a failure. Hopefully this one will not be. Okay. And... I don't know where that came from. Back now. Yeah, I was a little worried about this because I added some mass. And this thing won't have the DV. Well, I don't have this fuel tank right full. No, I think I need. I think I'm going to need more, more oomph on this. Bum, bum, bum. Sorry, I'm, I'm playing around. What's this thrust at? That thrust is at full. What's the staging here? The staging makes sense, right? Yep, it does. Okay. Um, what I'm doing is I'm just reducing the fuel in this tank. I'm going to put a third SRB on this thing. Um, but I just want to have a decent thrust to weight ratio in that stage. Okay, let's take this off. Let's take this off. Let's put these on three-way symmetry. And we're definitely going to test this. We're going to go three-way symmetry with the SRBs. And three-way symmetry with that. This, of course, increases the chance of a launch failure, unfortunately. Uh, but this seems to be the simplest way to do because Kerbalism does induce engine failure sometimes on ignition and now with three engines going that's three times the chance for a launch failure so we'll put these on a separate stage and release the launch clamps only there that gives us plenty of delta V let's play with the launch thrust there 
that's helpful. I, I think I think that's good. So I'll save this booster later, but I'm hoping. Um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. Well, there's only one way out of it, is there? Is to see if this. Let's see. I'm gonna do a test launch. So we're just gonna save this. Because this is technically now a new booster. I want to make sure things still go okay. So simulate. We're gonna simulate just the launch and then we're gonna do this mission. Being tell you like my let's do the math series. Thank you very much. I'm getting an idea for another let's do the math video, but that's gonna have to be for some time in the future. I'm kind of in the deep in doing the tutorial videos right now. Okay, so uh, throttle up, da, da, da. let's watch these engines because all three of them need to ignite. And we're off. Turn off alarm clock there, we don't need that. Okay, pitching over. Lots and lots. I think there's gimbling on these engines. Yeah, there is. I think it's restock that adds puts gimbling on these um, SRBs. I mean, it's great. It gives you a ton of attitude control, that's for sure. A little bit too far to the south, so I'm just going to knock it towards the north just a little bit. want to get right onto that 90 degrees. pitching over very nicely. Again, I'm not doing the pitching over. It's doing it, it's just following that prograde vector. If anything, it's probably going up a little too steeply, but it ain't bad. Okay, about to lose those SRBs. There we go. And they're probably going to crack. Oh, a little bit of Keystone Cops there with them ducking each other out. <laughs> All right, um, yeah, I, I really don't see why this would be a problem. Yeah, we should take this up still. Oh, I should reduce throttle. No, let's not. I want to get this over with. Again, this is just a test to see if it will make orbit. Uh, I think it's through the hard part, so I don't see why it wouldn't. Our Apple Waps is just past 80 kilometers. So I'm just time warping. I just want to get up to Apoapsis. There is still... There's that. Let's stage the fairings. They're okay. Antenna's still there and good. It is. Uh, let's see. I got... My velocity is about 750. Plus that is 21. That's kind of close. Oh, well, we'll go for it. Terminate the simulation. It's gonna be tight. 